All right, uh, I think it's probably a good time to get started then. So thanks everyone for taking part in the chat so far. And like I say, we'll be dropping links in there. Uh, you can also use it to ask questions. I, I, will, be ask, I will be answering questions as they come. Uh, well, I will be answering questions. Um, I may do them as they come in, or I might leave it to the end. It just depends on the flow of the webinar. So if I don't uh, reply or don't acknowledge it immediately, um, don't be disheartened, I'll, I'll get around to it in a bit. So yeah, just to say again, I'm Evan, uh, this is Smileback, and today we are talking about getting started with Smileback MPS. So MPS is a type of survey, I'm sure you know that much, but we're going to talk about what is it, uh, you know, why is it useful, why is it important. I'm going to give you a quick kind of bird's eye view of what Smileback MPS is about, what it does. Uh, and then really we'll get into the main part of the webinar, the actual demo. So walking you through inside the Smileback app, you know, how to set up a Smileback campaign, what are some of the neat uh, kind of features and things that will help you to know uh, what are some of the things to think about. Uh, and I'm actually curious to know uh, who here has used MPS before as in actually run a, a survey. Uh, we're going to pop up a poll question on the screen very shortly. Um, if you're watching a recording of this, uh, you won't be able to see the poll, so I'll just read out the options right now. So, yeah, have you ever run an MPS survey before? And the options are yes with Smileback, yes but not with Smileback, and no. So that is going to be on screen just for about 30 seconds, 60 seconds now, so please do vote. Uh, and then I'll, I'll read out the results and... Uh, It'll be useful because I can then also slightly tailor the rest of the webinar to the information I get. So please do vote. That should be on your screen right now. And uh, once we've got a good number of responses, we can close that out and I'll get the results. So MPS, Net Promoter Score, it's a type of survey. If you've really never seen it before, or you're really thinking, what is MPS? Why does he keep saying MPS? Why do they keep saying emails about MPS? Um, MPS is a type of customer loyalty survey. And it is that question that I'm sure you've seen, you probably get it from other vendors. You might have seen it from consumer brands as well. And it asks you, how likely are you to recommend Smileback, Delta Airlines, Ready Breck? Uh, to a friend or a colleague or a peer. And it's a very good way of finding out about, you know, how do your customers feel about your brand, your company, your products overall? How likely are they to stay your customers, you know, recommend you, stop being your customers? Um, yes, that poll is just finished. I should get the results on screen any second now. All right. So we asked, uh, have you ever run an MPS survey before? And, uh, 36% of people say yes with Smileback. 9% uh, of people said yes, but not with Smileback. And most people, 55% said no. So that's great. That's the kind of spread I was expecting. So the people who've never run an MPS survey before, um, you know, this webinar is going to, I hope, help you do that. Uh, but there will be also a chance to book a one-on-one -on -one call with us. And for the people who have done it before uh, and have done it with Smileback, uh, you will have seen some of the things I'm going to show you, but we've made a lot of improvements recently and I'll be um, trying to kind of highlight those in particular. So so look out for those uh, because there should be some new things. And, and unless you've done it really very recently, there'll be new things for you as well. So yeah, as I was saying, Net Promoter Score, MPS, uh, it's asking people if they'd recommend your company. So, you know, if you're already using Smileback, uh, if you're already using CSAT, uh, with us or with anyone else, you know, at each ticket, you're sending that very quick survey of the faces. How did we do on this request? Very, very simple question, right? Um, bad, neutral, good. Now, MPS is how likely are you to recommend us? So it's actually quite, it's a higher bar. It's quite a high bar, right? People aren't just saying, well, yeah, it's okay. They're, they're thinking, would I, do I like this? Do I like this company? Do I like this product so much? I would say to my friend or my peer or my colleague, yeah, 
you should use this. So the idea is by setting that quite high bar, the people who enter high up uh, on the zero to 10 scale, and we'll take a look at exactly what that looks like in a little bit. Uh, the people give you a nine or 10, those are very satisfied people. Uh, those are what we call promoters. And you want to hold on to those people and encourage those people to, they should really actually help you grow your business through, you know, referrals, word of mouth. People who are in the middle, you know, you need to take care of because they might, they could go either way. You might be able to make them more happy. They might get less happy. And then the people zero to 60 are what are called detractors. And in MPS terms, you actually quite worried about those people. You know, they might stop being your customers or they might hang on for a bit, but you know, be be really down on you and, and be saying to other people that they're, they're down on your business. Um, but a good thing is, is that everyone who responds to MPS has taken the time to tell you what they think. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about following up uh, on MPS results. We're mostly going to talk about setting it up, getting it running, but I'll talk a bit about fo following up and what to actually do with the information. And it is typically used for a set audience um, on a set schedule. So Smileback MPS is really set up with this in mind that you you can create one-off campaigns if you wish, and uh, there's some particular times you might do that, uh, and I'll mention those in a bit. But generally speaking, what we kind of expect people and imagine people are going to do is send an MPS survey on a regular basis, be that every two months, every three months, uh, twice a year, once a year. Uh, and the good thing about that is you you have your audience. Uh, of people you want to hear from, you know, current clients, main contacts, uh, and you're going to ask them a few times a year and see like, are the people, are they, you know, is our score going up? Are our customers getting happy? Are they getting less happy? <clears throat> Someone writes back saying they're not very happy. Great. You know, you can work on that. And the next time you run it, see, are they more happy now? That's really what MPS is very good uh, at doing. You know, it's not triggered by just closing a ticket um it's it's trying to take a longer view and a kind of a, a more elevated view of the business as a whole and as uh, of your relationships as a whole now as for um mps and smileback in particular as i say it's different from csat uh but they complement each other so csat you're checking ticket by ticket you know really trying to have like a very fast feedback loop they're not happy about how we did in this ticket. Let's get back to them right now and let's solve that problem. Uh, MPS, you are using it really to try and get things that aren't really captured in that ticket by ticket survey. You know, what do people feel about pricing? What do people feel about the overall fit of your company and your service uh, for their business? Um, you know, it can bring up interesting sometimes surprising feedback you know there might be people who are quite happy um with your text and how they're doing business uh ticket to ticket sorry but they might have some other problem uh which mps can help you uncover and deal with um and it's a very very good fit for managed service providers and other organizations who who really live and die on ongoing customer relationships you know where you are trying to gain and keep clients for year after year uh, and that's why we added it. You know, that's why there was a, a big demand from a lot of our customers to add it. Now, um, we break it into things called campaigns. Uh, and basically a campaign is a group of people, the audience uh, who are gonna get the survey on a particular schedule. So what I was just talking about on the previous slide, you might just have one campaign, but if you wish, you can set up multiple. And I'll talk about that in a second. And as for how you actually get people into the survey, uh, you can either import them directly from your ticketing system or you can upload them by CSV. So again, you know, it's not, um, it's different from CSAT. It's not embedded inside your ticketing system. It's not being automatically emailed each time you close a ticket. So instead you've got to give us the, the list of contacts and, and tell us when to survey them. And then you can see here at the bottom of the slide, um, just a little preview of, of what it looks like. So. You, you know, have your company logo at the top, um, the kind of personalized greeting here, hello, John. And then what you've got there is the classic MPS question. Uh, obviously, you'll see your own company name in there. So how likely are you to recommend Southwest IT to a friend or colleague? 
and then the scale I was talking about, zero to 10, where nine and tens are the promoters, they're the most happy. Six and sevens are the uh, passives, the, the people who are in the middle could go away. And then all the way from zero to six are the detractors, the people who are, would not, who are saying they would not recommend your company. So that is the kind of quick, like bird's eye view of what MPS is, what MPS and Smileback is. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you know, drop them in the chat in the Q and A, uh, and I'll get to them at the end. But what I'm going to do now is I'll jump into the actual uh, the demo, the tour of MPS inside of Smileback. So I'm just now moving over to our demo account. Uh, so this is our kind of fake company, Southwest IT. As you can see, we're currently looking here at the CSAT dashboard. So I'm guessing that most of you who have already used Smileback a bit, you're already familiar with this part of it. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, we have various icons. Uh, and down at the bottom, we've got the MPS section. So the campaigns page and the responses page. So if you've never run um, MPS and Smileback before, what you want to do is go to campaigns and I've got it open in this tab here. And this is where you come to, you know, create a new campaign, which is the main thing we're talking about today. Uh, but also to just look at, look at, and if you need to update, manage your existing campaigns. And then on the responses page, so that's the icon right at the bottom of the left-hand menu. <clears throat> this is where the individual responses come in with their score who it's come from and if they left you a comment uh, and all that information those scores uh, that's what gets combined together to give you the overall MPS score so I'm going to go back to the campaign manager now the campaigns page here um, and yeah let's take a look at creating a new campaign <clears throat> so as I say um, the idea of the campaign is to let you have a particular schedule and a particular contacts list or, or audience. Um, I'm going to just create one, um, but just to talk a little bit about why you might create more than one. I'll, I'll use just the example of Smileback ourselves. We use this, we use Smileback, and we have a few different MPS campaigns. So we have one which we run every month and we send it to the new users. So just people who just joined in the last month uh, and they will only get it once um, in that campaign. Then we have one for our, um, our kind of main active uh, contacts, like the people who are really managing their company Smileback accounts who log in very often and we run that once a quarter. Then we have one aimed at the kind of higher level decision makers who we we know we've got them. We we can tell just by like job title and looking at our you know our, our customer database. Uh, that these are you know CEO, managing director, director of uh, customer service, people like that. We send that every six months. So people who we believe to be very important, you know, people might hold the purse strings and make decision, make the ultimate decision on keeping Smileback or not, but don't necessarily use it themselves very often. Those people we we do every six months. So it's, you know, different types of contacts uh, have different schedules. And you can just call the campaign something that makes that clear. So I'm going to call this um, main contacts quarterly because we're going to make a quarterly campaign here. And as you can see, you can choose when it will first run. Um, if it's not set to your time zone or, or the right time zone for your customers, you can change that. You can also uh, you know, if, if you are really spread, say right across, <clears throat> right across the USA or across multiple countries, you know, you might have different campaigns uh, for different regions and therefore want to use different time zones. So as I say, this will be a quarterly campaign and I'm going to set it here to run every three months. Um, and I'll just go ahead and leave it in English, but there are other options. Now, this first toggle here, this is one of our new settings. So if you have looked at this before, you, you won't have seen this unless you've been in, in the last few weeks. Uh, do not deploy on weekends. So as you can see, I've got my starting date of October the 20th. 
Uh, so each time this runs, you, you know, when it runs again uh, in three months' time in January, it'll run on January 20th. But if that falls on a Saturday, Sunday, we don't want to send it then because, you know, this is going to this is going to people from our business to their business. They're, they're probably not, I hope not, <laughs> checking their work emails on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, so instead, it will just delay it. And as soon, and when Monday comes around, it'll run it then. That's turned on by, uh, by default. You can turn it off if you want, but we definitely suggest leaving it on. And then the next option down here is to automatically resend the survey to people who didn't respond. So it's going to run. Um, on October the 20th, you know, some people are going to respond um, kind of when they first get it. And then the people who didn't, they'll just be sent a survey again after one week. So it's very simple. It's just resending the same survey, uh, but only to the people who didn't respond. And you can run it um, a little bit later if you want. I'm just going to leave it on one week. And it just gives you a chance. We, we find it to be pretty effective. There's obviously a point of diminishing returns. So we don't let you keep on doing this, like keep sending and resending, but resending it once seems to kind of hit the sort of sweet spot of uh, encouraging enough new people to, to, to respond who didn't the first time without annoying people too much who just didn't want to respond. And now I'm going to save and continue. Um, and this is where we set up the email. So this will come from Smileback. We are going to send it. It's not embedded inside ConnectWise or um, Zendesk or Kaseya or, or whatever ticketing system you're using. It's going to come from Smileback. And by default, obviously, that means it will come from our email domain. But what you can do and what we definitely suggest you do is use the setup domain option here. So you tell us your domain uh, so let's say southwestit.net and what we'll do is give you a couple of rec a couple of keys um, an SPF record and a DKM record so you need to get to, to in order to use those you need to get into the DNS settings the domain name uh, management settings for your domain you may need to ask a colleague to help you with that and basically what that lets you do is you save the information we give you uh, and then that gives us the permission to send an email basically in your name from your domain. Uh, so do bear that in mind because it takes a little while to set that up. You know, you need to go into the DNS settings. Those don't kind of all update automatically because they need to be recognized by various servers. Uh, so it's definitely worth trying to set this up, you know, a little way in advance, I would say, do it a kind of a week or two before you first want to send it. Um, and the benefit of that, though, uh, why it's worth taking the time to do that is, you know, your customers probably don't know Smileback, they know you. Um, so they will recognize the email address uh, if it's coming from your email address, where they probably won't recognize ours. Uh, and you've probably taught, you, you know, you've probably taught them as their IT provider to not, um, to be quite wary of emails they don't recognize. Uh, and the other thing is you can not just choose the domain, you can choose the exact email address. <clears throat> so that means you could say, look, we're going to start doing this survey. Uh, it's going to be, you know, it's a legit thing. We're doing it so we can get your feedback to help you better. And it's going to come from this email address. And so, you know, you can tell them uh, to look out for it, uh, get that email address in their contacts list. Uh, and that will help you basically deliver more email successfully get more responses uh, from your customers. You can set up a subject line and you can even actually personalize the subject line. So if you click on this, add a customer name here. So then it will say, you know, uh, Joan, um, how are we doing? Um, it's worth spending a little bit of time on this. We do have articles uh, on how to, how to do this whole process, basically, uh, including some tips on personalizing and, and coming up with a good subject line. You'll of course see your company name here. And then as you can see, we have the greeting already selected the greeting with the first name. So it will be personalized in each email. You can change all of this. Uh, you can easily reset it back to the default. You can take out um, that personalization if you wish to and easily put it back in. And then you've got the survey question itself. So as you can see here, we've already got the um, the MPS question. 
And I would definitely suggest most of the time you want to leave that as it is right now. How likely are you to recommend company name to a friend or colleague? That's, that is the MPS question. Um, it's, it's well known, it's well tested, it can be benchmarked. Why you might want to change it is if you are running a survey that relates to a specific project, specific business line, there's maybe a bit more specific than your overall company. Um, and I know what some people do is they, when they complete a large project, like, um, you know, some kind of migration, uh, they might do a one-off, a, a one-time campaign to just that company. And then they will ask about, uh, based on this project, how likely are you to recommend us? Or how likely are you to recommend our migration services to a friend or colleague? Um, and if you change that, uh, as I'm just typing some nonsense here, uh, you can click on these arrows and it will just go back to the default. You can select a logo uh, and a color. And this is another recent change. So we've had the ability to change the color inside the email. I'm going to go blue uh, since we first did MPS. But now that color will actually go through. And we'll see when we look at the comment page, uh, it will continue through there. So it just gives you, a, you know, another bit of customization, you know, help you match this to your branding and uh, just make it look good and, you know, really part of your company. Now we have the setup for the comment page. If you set up uh, your CSAT survey, you will actually probably recognize this. This works in really exactly the same way that people are going to get the email. They click on one of those numbers uh, and then they, it's logged immediately and they're taken through to the comment page, which is an optional comment page. Um, optional because if you force people to leave comments, one, they'll probably just close the tab and not complete the survey. Two, they might just write any old nonsense to click send. And three, they'll stop responding to future ones. So we do sometimes get asked, like, can't we make people leave comments? Um, we, we don't. We, uh, we don't have that option because it will, it will very quickly deplete the goodwill of your customers. Um, but what is on here, uh, can you tell us why you chose your score? Again, that's provided. You can change it if you need to, but we've already got text there. A bit more interesting is here in the middle, we have these marketing options. So enable marketing permissions means that people who are happy, people who click nine or 10, uh, when they have written their comment, they'll have the option of saying, yes, you can use this comment in your materials. And we'll see what that looks like in a second. And we also have Google reviews. So you can put in here the link to your business's Google listing. So if you go and take a look at the Google My Business um, dashboard, uh, if, if you haven't set it up, there's a, a few quick steps to set it up with Google. Basically, it's the thing that lets you manage like your listing on Google Maps, you know, your uh, address, opening times, uh, logo, things like that. Um, they have a link in there to get more new reviews. Uh, and if you put that into Smileback, what it means is, again, the people, only the people happy if they consent, rather than landing on the thank you message, which you see down here, they'll be taken straight through to your Google listing um, and it will pop open as a new review, you know, a new blank field where they can leave a review. And MPS is a great, great fit for this, this uh, kind of marketing side of, of the surveys because you're prompting people to think about the overall business. You know, people who are, who are, giving you nines and tens on MPS, the comments they write, they're more likely to be good for that kind of overall um, testimonial or review. So they might not just be saying, oh, Bob, fix my printer for me. They're more likely to be saying uh, Southwest IT are really helpful and I've worked with them for a really long time. Uh, and you always, you know, you, you, you always come free for us, something like that. Um, so I would definitely suggest looking into using these. And we can see actually what they look like right now. So as you can see, I turned on both of those options. So if someone's given you a nine or 10, they'll then see these check boxes down here. So they write their comment. If they want to, they check these boxes and then they click submit. And you'll see the submit button that has that blue color that I chose earlier. 
So again, that's another recent tweak just to fit things in a bit better with your branding. Um, and now this, we've kind of come to the, the last but most important bit of the setup. Uh, this is where you actually get the contacts into Smileback, so the people who are going to get your MPS survey. Uh, as I said, you can either import them direct from the ticketing system uh, or you can upload them from a CSV. The good thing about importing them from the ticketing system is because it's using an API import, if it's a repeating survey, so it's running once a quarter, that import will then be automatically carried out each time uh, fresh. So if we go ahead and look at the filter options, we'll see why that's important. Um, if you're using ConnectWise Manage, please, you'll see this page and please do pay attention. Um, you may need to update if you have a custom security role for Smileback. You might need to give Smileback a few more permissions for this to work. Uh, if you're on one of the other ticketing systems, uh, they don't have the kind of same level of uh, configuration as this. And then what it does is Smileback talks to your ConnectWise or other ticketing system and it brings back information. Um, so as you can see here, the, these are all ConnectWise fields and, and this is what our ConnectWise customers will see. Uh, these are what we haven't done so far, basically, we, so we haven't just imported a big list of people. Uh, as you can see, what we've instead done is brought in certain types of information. Uh, so contact type, companies, company status, company type, marketing groups. And when you click on each of these options, you'll see the matching options that appear in your ConnectWise Manage instance uh, or the, the, you know, the actual clients that appear there. And the great thing about doing this is, you know, as I kept stressing at the beginning of this uh, setup process about defining an audience, the people, you know, who do you want to get to this survey? Um, this is where you can figure that really. And you might do it by way of using a marketing group. And some people already have a marketing group that, that matches. Some people want to set one up for MPS. Um, but you might also do it through one of these other options or through a combination. I'm going to click um, on one of these right now. I'm going to go for Prover and Champions and Decision Maker. So we get a few different options. And I'm going to select uh, Customer Companies. So we will um, already filter out people who are inactive, already filter out people who've marked themselves or you've marked as do not email, but you can further define it here. And let's say you, you know, you have a contact type for, for like main uh, contact, or you could even create a new contact type specifically for MPS and label the people you want with that. So now that you've told Smileback to look for those people, when you click next, this is the point where we're actually getting the individual matching contacts. So Smileback is going to ConnectWise and it's, you know, it's fetching back the individuals who, who meet those filter options. And as you can now see, we've got a few different options here. You'll probably have more. Obviously, we're on a kind of a test data set, which is a little bit, a little smaller than, than the real thing. But what you can do on this page then is you can start to see, okay, who have we got here? Uh, yeah, Jim, he should be in there. You know, Bill, he should be in there. You can sort it. You can even search. So if you've got, you know, you might have a couple hundred names here. Uh, you can use the search bar to just check that certain people who should be here are in. And as you may have noticed, we have these orange uh, checkboxes on the left-hand side. And the point of that is you can untick them. So you can take individuals out of the campaign. That's really good if you have basically defined the right audience, but there's a couple of people in there who you think, mm, no, I know they... They want to get other emails, but they don't want to get surveys. I'm going to just take them out and they'll just stay out of this campaign as long as it runs. Um, however, if you find yourself like ticking lots and lots and lots of people, um, then you probably need to go back and look again at the filter. You might need to actually go and look at your kind of record keeping inside ConnectWise. Uh, what I often say to people is, if, you know, if you're going to run this for the first time or you're running it for the first time in a long while do check like you know are the former customers definitely now marked as inactive um you know are there contacts who are long gone from those companies who are still there 
and and they need to be archived or, or, or changed to inactive or do not email you know it's it's definitely worth taking a little while to like clean up your likely contacts list uh because smileback of course can only import um you know smileback has to has to take the information from your ticketing system so if there are any errors duplicates uh you know email addresses that don't work anymore smileback will take them in and it will try and send service to them but when you're ready you click on save and continue and then you just get one final chance to confirm uh where it will tell you you know how many people have you imported um what method so was it the import or was it the csv upload and if it was the import what are the filters you used? so you know do pay attention just make sure like yeah, this is definitely the right number of people. We didn't accidentally import another thousand that we didn't need to, or we didn't make it so tight that we actually got two people. You know, take a moment to check this, and if you're not happy, just click edit, and you can play around with the filters and do it again. Uh, and then when you're ready, just click the big green activate campaign button, and then whatever you selected as your starting date and starting time, that's when it first runs. So that is kind of it for, for setting up the campaign. I'll very quickly talk about um, the responses page and the managed campaigns, campaigns page, but then I'll, I'll get to the questions. So if you've got questions, do start dropping them in the chat uh, or the Q&A and I'll, I'll get to them very quickly. Uh, actually, I have the responses page open right here. So yeah, the responses page, you know, each response comes in one by one, as I said earlier. This is very similar to the reviews page for CSAT. So you might already, you know, even if you haven't used MPS yet, this probably looks relatively uh, familiar to you. Um, just a few things I want to kind of draw your attention to. If you had used that marketing permission option, you know, someone who's given you a good score and written a comment uh, like Michael here, uh, they have the possibility of checking that box and saying, yep, I give them my permission. And what that looks like is you get this green tick here. And in fact, you can sort by that or you can filter by that. Um, so one, you can just use those. You just know like, oh, you know, we can come here and, and take these comments. But you can also publish them to our website widget. So the website widget is a, another possibility we have. Um, basically, a, a badge you can put on your public website they will show your MPS score or your CSAT score, and it will show the comments that you have published. Um, we use it ourselves. Uh, I looked at a customer the other day, and it was one of the first things on their website, actually. They, they had even gone to the length of customizing the CSS to make it like exactly fit their layout. You don't need to go that deep if you don't want to, uh, but they had it right there as this like, big seal of approval, like, look, you know, our real customers they say these things you know it's um it's a great bit of social proof um we could do another kind of 15 minutes just talking about the widget i don't want to keep people for too long um but but do bear that in mind and actually yuri you could drop a link to that in the chat that would be great um and just to say a little bit about this page for any of the people who are watching who have used mps with smileback before We've given it a little bit of a refresh recently. Um, so the key metrics where you actually see your MPS score, that can be minimized if you're kind of concentrating more on just reading through the results. Uh, and also the filters, we have cleaned that up a bit. And now the filters are kind of hidden until you need them. So if you click on filter settings here, this is where you can use, for example, as I've been saying about running different campaigns, you know, you can choose between as you can see here, we have a quarterly and a yearly campaign. For example, you can choose between campaigns or just look at the people who are happy or aren't happy. Um, and it will give you a summary up there. So even when you minimize that, you've still got a bit of a summary of what you're doing. And then just one last thing I want to mention, because it's another new improvement, is the possibility to preserve filters. So if you want to keep up the same view, uh, like always show me the last 30 days instead of 90 days, which is default. You can choose that part on that preserve filters and on your browser, on your computer, it will, it will stay like that. Um, it's just like a local cookie setting. Right. I've been talking, uh, for a long time now, so I'm going to get into the questions. So I'm going to take a look at the chat over here.
Uh, I've been testing MPS, so this is from Tom. I've been testing MPS. If you have results, automatically go to your website. Are you able to remove them easily? <clears throat> so actually the results going to the website, it's only when you choose to um, click on this publish toggle here. And the reason we do that is exactly the kind of thing you're wondering about, Tom, is what if someone clicked 10, but they wrote a comment that you don't really want to share publicly? You know, maybe it's just not quite appropriate. Um, maybe they say something that's a bit too kind of specific, the kind of information about, you know, their company and their IT that they shouldn't really put out there. Uh, you can just use that toggle and, you know, choose to not publish certain comments. And we do that, you know, when we, when we publish comments to our widget, uh, I, I tend to prefer a certain type of comment, one that's a kind of good overall um, thing about Smileback and not one that's really going into the details of the particular ticket, for example. So yeah, you, you're in control of, of what will go on there or not. And I see Yuri has been posting links uh, to various the relevant bits of the help center uh, and also to book a call with us. So please do make use of that Canly link because uh, we can then do a one-on-one -on -one call you or uh, you and me or you and Yuri and help you set up on you know your side, your particular MPS campaign. And now, now I'm just looking because we've got a few more comments lower down. Um, <clears throat> So Tyler asks, will Google reviews or marketing be posted on any survey responses other than promoters? Uh, so no, that option, that only appears to promoters. So the people who click nine or 10, or if it's on CSAT, the people who click the green face, they will see that option if you're using it. Uh, the people who aren't happy, they just won't, they won't see that option. Those check boxes, you know, I want to share my uh, review on Google, or I want to give permission to use my review and marketing, they just won't see those options because obviously you want to deal with those people um, inside, you know, like privately, you don't want to kind of push them out to Google. Okay, uh, I, so yeah, Tom, thanks, I see. Yeah, and Tom, if, you, if, um, if you're ready to go, great, but if you did have any questions, um, you know, just, just let us know. Um, yeah, and you know, this isn't your only chance to, to ask us about this. So if I just go, I'm going to leave Smileback now. Uh, so just to say here on our last slide, you know, help at smileback.com. That's our main email that goes into our tickets. We check those every single day, respond every single day. So if you write to us at help at Smileback, we'll see it uh, and we can help you out with whatever question or issue you have. We also have Calendly. Uh, Yuri actually posted that in the, the chat. But actually, Yuri, if you could post it again now, just so people got a clickable link. You basically that is a place where you can book a time. So if you want us to go through this again, uh, you know, you want to ask us more questions, or you want to ask us things that are specific to your company, please do book a time. And you can use that for anything, not just MPS. You know, if you want to help with the website widget, any just want to talk about feedback and ideas around using feedback in general, please do, because we're here to help you. Um, and all that consultation and support that's included in, in your subscription, you know, you don't have to pay or you don't only get a certain amount per year, nothing like that. Um, yeah, help.smileback.com, that's our help sensor. So Yuri has already posted a lot of links to specific articles, but if you did want to just go and browse all of our resources, you can do that at help.smileback.com. Uh, yeah, and you will see right now in the chat, Yuri has posted a couple of booking links. Uh, oh yeah, and one more thing to mention is smileback.canny.io. Thank you, Yuri, for putting that in there. That's our public roadmap. So you'll see on there, what are we working on? Um, that has both big things like totally new bits of, of, of Smileback functionality, but also improvements. So a lot of the things I just mentioned about um, improving the look of the filters, uh, some of the options for, you know, not sending the, the, the survey on weekends. Those are, those are based on ideas that people uh, gave us, people requested from us. Uh, okay, so Tom is asking, can you explain the MPS scoring system a little more? Yeah, sure thing. So let's go back to our little example email here where, where you've got the uh, zero to 10 scale. So MPS, net promoter score, um, as I say, it's actually divided into three parts, zero to six, those are called detractors, seven and eight, those are called passives, and nines and tens, those are called promoters. So actually the net part of net 
promoter score is it's taking all of those uh, responses and then it's looking at the proportion of the um, the proportion of promoters and the proportion of detractors as a as a whole um, and turning that into a score and the score actually ranges from minus 100 to plus 100 so if every single person is unhappy uh, you'll get a score of minus 100 I'm sure that won't happen to you. Um, if everyone is uh, is happy, you will get a score of 100. Could happen, could happen um, with, within a particular time frame. It's probably unlikely uh, overall, though, you know, if you're sending this to a, a large group of people. And what that means is, is, um, is if you think about that in terms of uh, CSAT, you know, the typical smileback uh, customer has a CSAT probably around 90, 92, 93, maybe high, high 80s, maybe even high 90s, but tends to be very high, um, even though it, it theoretically also goes down to minus 100. But as I say, MPS is quite a high barrier, as I said here. Um, so it's typical to have even a good MPS score to be probably like 30, 40, 50s. Those are those are nice, healthy MPS scores. Above 50, you're getting into like very, very good territory. So even if it doesn't feel like it, you know, you're looking at a score of 50 something, 60 something, 70 something. You know, you might be thinking, well, we're a very long way from 100 here. We're really doing well. That's that's actually pretty good. But but what MPS is best for doing is is once you've been running it for a while, you can compare your performance over time. And what we do is we look at it kind of monthly and quarterly and you know we have an idea of where we'd like it to be but what we're really interested in is did we do better than last time or not is it easier to lose points and gain points yes a little bit in the sense that um passives and detractors will both bring you down from that perfect 100 score but uh passives will bring you down a little bit and detractors will bring you down more uh it's the same as csat we actually have an article uh called how is net CSAT score calculated? Uh, I think there's a one for MPS as well. Uh, Yuri will post that in the chat in a, uh, shortly. And that kind of explains this visually as well, because I know it doesn't, doesn't always make sense when it's just me saying it. <laughs> uh, just to go to another question then. Uh, oh, I see actually we already have the link for that. Um, yeah, so another question, is it possible to send an automatic alert to distribution group when each service score comes in? That is a fantastic question. Let me just go back over to our account. So something we introduced then a couple of, couple of months ago now um, is we brought in automations for MPS like we have for CSAT. So yeah, as you can see, if you click on the tools, um, the tools menu here that's in the top of the screen, top right of the screen, then go to automation. You will now see that there's the option to add MPS rule. And uh, exactly as you were suggesting, you could send an email to a set group of addresses. So you could do it for every every single result, you know, every new response, or you could make it more specific. So you know, maybe only the people who gave you a comment, uh, or only the people who aren't happy, for example. And you could put one email address in there. You could put multiple. So yeah, that's a great question. And actually, while we're talking about automation, another thing you can do, uh, which you may or may not be aware of, is in our integrations menu, that's uh, or integration settings, they also live under the tools menu. Uh, we have our Slack and Microsoft Teams integrations. So you can automatically post MPS results to Slack or to Teams as well. And just like as we were looking with that email, where you can just get it all or you can specify certain types of responses you can do the same thing there so if you want you know you can um, just get the ones with comments in one channel or just get the good ones in one channel and like the bad ones in another channel there's all sorts of different possibilities there all right well this um, has been really good thanks for all the questions I am um, it's always very good to hear from you and what you're interested in knowing about. Uh, and as I was saying then, just before I went into this last lot of questions, you know, we have various ways of, of helping you out, by, be it by email, by call, by, uh, you know, our resources, which you can browse in your own time. So just make use of them and drop us a line, book a call, 
like I say, be very happy to talk about this one on one as well. Um, and if you're looking, you know, if, you, if you're watching the recording of this uh, and there was something that didn't make sense to you, you didn't have a chance to ask me live, please just use one of these resources here and, and let me know. And thank you very much, Tyler. I really appreciate your, your kind words. All right, well, I'm going to wrap up there and let you all get on with your day. I think most of you are over in the States, so you've still got a whole day ahead of you. So, yeah, have a good day and hopefully speak to you soon. Thank you.